Yeah, he's in go, go, go. Welcome back to the Acoustic Shop channel. I am John. Hey guys, it is New Guitar Thursday. Hi, welcome back to another Takeover Tuesday. I'm your host, Jeremy Chapman. We will see how much we can talk about before John arrives and takes over. Um, but Jason is monitoring all your comments. Jason, is the Jason cam on? It is not. It's on now. Guys, Jason is ma monitoring questions and comments. Please tell us where you're watching from and uh, what is the weather like there because it's cold and dreary here. When it yesterday, is. it got up to like 75 degrees over the weekend. Everybody's talking about the weather as heading their way right now yeah we had some storms so. come through the uh, midwest last night i slept through most of it thunder woke me up at about 2 a.m shook the entire house uh, a kid or two came into bed with us and i only had one wake up a lot of questions everybody's asking if each other plays mandolin on here we got a lot of mandolin players yeah, or mandolin enthusiasts we have the community talking we got themselves. our good friend skid was the first on here so welcome skid gear you win he he's yeah. been very diligent of being here first and I like it. Um, we've got Neil from Cork Island. All right. I believe that's where he's Cork from. Ireland. We got Alex here, Jeremy. We got Ryan. Ryan's the first time on our stream. Welcome, Ryan. Ryan said he bought a guitar from us. I believe that's what he said earlier. He said he bought a guitar from us on Reverb, and he liked Thank it. Thank you. That's Forget cool. The support. Yeah, he got his Eastman. From, did anybody uh, maybe get to a watch mandolin my mandolin, mandolin Mondays, Mondays yesterday? We did a special edition of Mandolin Mondays. It was great. It's a. It was an April Fool's. I, I did, Somebody, I did a, an instructional video on how to slice things with a mandolin slicer. I liked it. Michael Rosh said he'll trade a 15 gallon still for a 305 uh, mandolin. So is the still full? I don't know. And does it have the the corn mash? Anyway. Uh, Ryan also says that he hears handsome mandolin virtuoso Darren Nicholson is doing a streaming at the exact same time. He's trying to steal your thunder. That's why there's beef, by he the way. He would. He would do that. He goes up against me. He knows he can pick any other day of the week, any other time. Well, really, we go stre live stream have almost every day, so yeah. he really can't pick another day. I, I have the mandolin he wants most in the world, so. Skid Gear says, so tell John to fly a kite. Agreed. Today be a good day with Got, the, uh, Gotta Fly here. Lee is on here, Jeremy. Good to see you guys. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, Jason's still going to go through a few more. Jamie's here. Give you a, a little preview. We're going to be talking about Bulis or Buis mandolins. I asked him how to say it. These guys are from Poland. It looks like Bulis, B-U-L-A-S. But he says in Poland it is Buis. The L's are like a W. Buis. Buis. Sounds Buis. like you have a speech impediment. Um, Jamie is here from... Kyrgyzstan, K-Y-R-G-Y-S-Y-Z-S-T-A-N. I don't know what that is. He says Jimmy Martin's a national hero there. So Jimmy Martin's a national hero everywhere. Have you seen uh, Marcel did a Carlton Haney music theory video? I, saw, I haven't watched the video, but I saw he did it. Pretty good stuff. Alex's hashtag here for the Mando. Pythagoras, so guys, nice. in the uh, musical spheres. We got SOH852 from Rochester, New York. We have a good connection to Rochester. Yeah. Jeremy, Dad tell him about in that. Rochester, New York. That's where uh, he was a he, uh, a young lad in Rochester, New York. That's where and our, our grandparents, grandma, lived grandparents lived until they were gone. There. So we used to go back every summer and have a uh, visit with the grandparents and stay there for a few weeks in Rochester. Daryl's here. Say hi, Daryl. We got to tour the Corning Glass Factory. Neil says it's cold and damp in Ireland. Isn't it always? From I'm not going to make it. I'm not going to make a uh, show on TV and in the movies. It is always cold no. and damp. And that's why it's so green over there. All the yes. I agree. My mic is louder than Jeremy's, but we can't change that right now, can we? I will talk louder. Just kidding. I can change it. Yeah, Jason is wearing it. Show, show Jason. He's got this entire rig. Yeah. He's got the control. You know why? Because you got your tuned up in the first down. one and you got the second one. Normally, you're louder. I forgot I have knobs. Well, all of it can be fixed. As long as we're not distorting, that's all we it care about. 
All right, have we, have we greeted most of the people when we can start talking about Buist mandolins and what is in this package right here? No, nah, I'm just going to keep All reading right. stuff. You I'll just sit here gosh. and uh, look pretty. We got Guitar Ganza here, Jeremy. Jeremy Hilliard. 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 Hilliard from Bristol. Just kidding, you can go. And then I'll interrupt you. Vince is here, Jeremy. All right, Vince, great to see you. That's what yeah, we've been Virginia waiting on. Virginia 73 part with Sunny. I'm going there. Yeah, you wait till tomorrow. We're getting everything ready for our big trip out to the Merle Fest in, uh, we're flying into Greensboro, and then we're going to Murph, what is it? Not, Wilkesboro. Wilkesboro. I was going to say Murfreesboro. Wilkesboro, North Carolina for the Merle Festival, Merle Fest Festival. It's going to be a blast. We got uh, a lot of new cool stuff we're going to be bringing to the event, including we're going to have a second tent set up out in the main shops area. We just got a bunch of uh, very colorful ukuleles that will be out there for all you people that have been Waiting for the ukulele selection to increase at the acoustic shop. It's happening. I like this. Uh, Star Fox, I, may, I uh, agree with your point. He says, welcome new people. We got a lot of new people this week. This That's is awesome. Exciting. We got Rex Green, Pastor Rex. Not that we don't appreciate the, the, uh, Baptist. the people have been here every week. It's always good to have some new people join in. Guitar Gansas said he loved your mandolin Monday. Thanks. I hope that uh, uh, you don't say says fingers. it's actually quite a bit louder. I fixed it. Leave me alone. There's <laughs> it's a delay. delayed. Um, how to be a nine-fingered mandolin mandolinist? Oh, he's speaking about your uh, My poster. Mandolin. No fingers. You're you're cutting oh. your fingers off with the uh, mandolin slicer. Anyway, yeah. Hey, there's a good question, Jeremy. Sure, this is I'm a good ready. question I'm to start waiting. with. Mandolin question specifically. Rex Green asks. These guys know what we're here for. GHS silk and steel versus silk and bronze? Question mark. So I did start originally with the silken steel mandolin strings from GHS. The question was, I guess you're mic'd up. I don't have to repeat the question. Um, yeah, the silken steel strings from GHS have a really dull, uh, deep tone, but they went dead on me really quick. So the steel uh, alone just kind of doesn't have as much resonance or brightness to them. And when you add that silk core uh, wrap underneath there, it kind of makes for quite a bit of a dull string. If you have an instrument that's very bright and tinny sounding, they might make a great option for you. I did play with those for probably six or eight months until I was introduced to the uh, silk and bronze strings. The bronze seems to offset, so you got the, uh, the brightness of bronze, it's a phosphor bronze, you got some of the brightness and, and punch of those, but then the satin, they, right underneath the wrap of bronze, they first run through it with a very thin strand of silk and the silk just kind of softens up that metal to metal contact you get from the, the bronze wrapping over the steel core. And I found it gives it, this manual really already has that real deep woody tone. But in general, on all my mandolins, uh, my, I use it on my Eastman uh, MD815 and my Gibson Sandbush model. It just really gives it that real deep Adam Steffi woody tone. Some of my favorite mandolin tone was Adam Steffi when, when he was the mandolin player with Allison Krauss and Union Station. He just had like this thump to his mandolin. And I really found those strings, the uh, silk and bronze, helped bring that out. The silk and steel, a little bit more dull. Your mandolin would be pretty bright for that to really be uh, what I would go for. Good call. Um, Kyle Bell's asking, did the pick guards come in for the TAS guitars? Yes did. and no. Yeah, so uh, John's obsessed. Yeah, John will probably talk about it on Thursday. We did get a shipment of them, and they look beautiful. They look almost identical to Tony's uh, real tortoiseshell pickguard. We did find that they're not following the same rosette pattern that Tony's was on. Long story short, John measured wrong and didn't get the measurements. They came out perfect. They're perfect except for, for D18. So we're going to still have them in stock to sell for D18. But uh, Mario Pru is going to make another batch of them. They're going to follow the, the right curvature of the enlarged sound hole. So yes, the, the prototype is perfect. It's just more of the cut around the sound hole that we want to make sure it's absolutely what we want. Uh, like I said, John will probably talk about some on uh, New Guitar Thursday or probably tomorrow on Shop Talk. But they do look incredible. He put one on his uh, number one prototype and it's spot on. It's right. It's, it's absolutely right. I thought Tony's My favorite name here. is on here, Jeremy. Coming from the United Kingdom. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pronounce it wrong, but I'm going to pronounce it the way I want to. Powell Orlowski. 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 Powell. 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 It's just fun to say. Okay. Did the humidity monitors come in yet? Delane Pascal's asking. The humidity what? Monitors. 
I think he's talking about the retail ones. The Bluetooth, okay, so we do have a whole bunch of them. We can show those real quick. We just have not made an item for it, and I blame myself and everyone else around me for that. So yes, we do have them and they are packaged. So these are the ones you get with the Dreadnought program when you, any instrument over $1,000 will get one of these in it. The great thing about, especially when we ship with these, is as your guitar is being shipped across country, this thing's, we activate it when we put it in the case. Before you open your guitar box, um, we normally recommend waiting 24 hours and that's just kind of a safe range to say your instrument should be in the right uh, humidity and uh, temperature range that your house is now in within 24 hours. With these, you can actually, we've got a QR code on front of the box. You can download the app through Bluetooth, connect to this device inside the box still. So without unboxing or risking your uh, instrument being damaged from a quick uh, humidity or temperature change, you'll see whether it's within 10 or five degrees you of your room. How can I help you? If it is, then you are safe to open it. Um, but the great thing is you can keep that in your case or leave it in your guitar room. And whenever you, if it gets to a, uh, it has this little alert. So if it gets too high or too low, you can set your threshold. It will alert your phone. Hey, your, your instrument's in danger. Go put some, sure. go okay. water your guitar um, or raise the temperature. So yeah, that is the official. How much are we selling those for? That's what we were trying to figure out. We haven't priced those yet. We By the time we get off this, I will come up with that and we will have them and we'll try to get those listed on the website. Take down his number, her, his or her number, and we will reach you back out to them. We do have a and bunch of those in. Still there. We mainly wanted to make sure that this was going to be the right device before oh. we actually started packaging them for retail sale. And so far, the feedback's been great well, from everybody um, that's gotten one. If you want to call back a little bit later. So yeah, I, I we will get back to you on that uh, okay. by the end of the live stream. That's going to put the emphasis on getting oh, that yeah, done. Jeremy, don't mess have, it up. We have a lot of these. We, you'll, be, you'll be totally fine. We'll make sure to get you one. Yeah, I think we got about 500 of those next door, so we should be good. <laughs> All right. Hey, Jeremy. Yes. We should talk about that. They're saying... Uh, SOH 852 is yeah, saying that that Carlton Haney know, video is worth watching. We have history with that Carlton Haney video. The only reason yes, it exists absolutely. online we, as a video is we forced it to be made. We got the first copy. We were copy. standing right beside him. We uh, we got to know the, the couple, Caroline Flake and I forget, Flake Spear, Spear. was yeah. the name of the, the, the older couple that did this little... They used to interview uh, everybody. They used to and interview all the people for public access TV and they were sitting there with Carlton Haney and then Jimmy Martin walked up and kind of took over the interview. But we got them at, uh, that was at IBMA in Louisville, Kentucky one year. We got them to go back to their hotel room and make us a copy of that. And we kind of made lots of copies of it. And that's really probably where this version of it came out. I have me holding the original copy, the, the, the direct copy off of his camera. I remember that. I think it we got a photo of that somewhere. So yeah, Good we news. were there. We're probably in the background of one of those shots, listening uh, firsthand to that wonderful historic discussion of the history of bluegrass and why it was something. it was either Jimmy Martin that made the high lonesome sound or Pythagoras uh, Pythagoras yeah Stan says howdy boys greeting from North Idaho hoping to see that Maddie at mad Addie Thompson soon we're gonna be getting that right yeah we got to film it last week it sounds great Stan yes it um, is uh, incredible guitar everybody here is you should be seeing it soon we love them uh, Andy's asking, Andy A is asking, are those the mandolins that were at IBMA? Yes. yes. That's where we discovered Buist mandolins. He had a booth set up there. I went over and played a number of them. Uh, a fellow that went to the IBMA show with us, Greg West, bought one of them there at the show and loves it. They're just a very well hand-built instrument. Um, we have another one in the shop that unfortunately developed a bit of a crack right at the, uh, the F-hole. Um, I'm not sure if, if it was just in getting it back from IBMA or something happened in the shop. We're getting that repaired. But it's a beautiful one, full gloss finish on that one. This is kind of their more entry level one. I just love this kind of relief they do on the carving of the top and back and then kind of leave it off on the points. Um, very sharp relief there. They do the speed neck on this version. So this is their standard model. Um, great shallow tuners. Just a, a beautiful instrument um, and they sound great. Like I've, I'm not sure exactly why this one's still here other than it is kind of a new name to the States. We're setting out to change that though. Yeah, we are going to change that. We, I just had a meeting with them last week, uh, me and John did, and they've agreed they're going to send us a whole bunch. We're going to have banjos and mandolins. We're going to stock this entire place with Bulus instruments. We're going to unbox this one here in a little bit. This is an octave mandolin that we ordered at IBMA and it has arrived. And this is already sold, guys. Word got out that we were getting it at the shop 
and a customer already purchased that, but we're going to unbox it, show you what's there. They also sent us some new banjo bridges that they're making. These guys make some great banjos. They do some really cool old-timey uh, open-back banjos, but also some sort of great resonator ones. Uh, one of the families that played at our booth at IBMA was playing one of their banjos and sounded great. They, again, their workmanship is just pristine. I believe they do all their parts, just like with this uh, mandolin bridge. It is a custom Buist mandolin bridge that they actually build. Tailpiece. Tailpiece, sorry. Tailpiece on that. I like Alex's comment here, Jer. Worst tour ever was the Kodak factory back when filming was a thing. Acres of buildings that were all sealed up to keep the light out and carefully labeled. Nothing to see. <laughs> that would be quite the tour. Yeah. By the way, our grandfather retired from yep, the Kodak Yep, he did factory. work with Kodak. And like I said, so we, we got to see uh, the Corning glass factory up there, which was actually, as a kid, a very cool tour. They would show you like the glass yeah. blowing and all the different cool fancy stuff they could do with glass. That's much cooler than watching film get made. Yeah. Um, dark. Josh Wren has a question for me. He says, hey, Mr. Bassman, what do you recommend for a short scale acoustic bass with electronics? How short a scale are we talking? Because if it's short, short scale, those Lanakai's over there are great. Trent, show them Lanakai. Those are short, short scale. They're shorter than, they're slightly larger than the U-Bass scale. Give us a call. We'll work it out with you. But those are super fun to play and they're short scale. Fun stuff. Well, this thing just plays so easy. So, any other questions right away or should we open up this uh, octave mandolin? Um, no. Guys, no progress on I the mean, mandolin room. I mean, there's a lot room. going on Me and here, Jason but. are under the gun. We said this week we're going to start, start redoing the mandolin room over there. Um, it is painted. One step closer, but we're going to... Jason decided he'd come up with some fancy big mandolin thing we're going to do on the back wall, so that's going to be... Yeah, we're going to have our new mandolin room. That'll be a fun soon. project. Hey, Trent, why don't you do a uh, shot of this here QR code for anybody that might be able to inclined to scan it. If you're not watching us on your cell phone and you can hold your cell phone in front of the screen right now, that'll take you to the Buist website, and you can see some of the really beautiful instruments they're building right now. All the way asking over. asking if the Ukes will hit our website before we go to Merle Fest. We yes. were debating that. We were saying, all right, we are we going to put them online? And if they sell, they sell, or are we going to keep them for the website? We did take pictures. So I think they should go online. I'm going to say yes. Donald Curtis is saying that uh, he loved the girls, just want to have fun cover. <laughs> Most entertaining for sure. <laughs> I didn't love it. Oh. Well, that was a little high for John's uh, vocal abilities. He was pushing it. But it was fun to do. Look at this. What did we blame John for? For girls just want to have fun? He said, how, no, that was earlier. I just said, he's going to come try to take over my Takeover Tuesday. Yeah. Okay, this is going to be the banjo bridge. Oh, that, it was about the pick guard. Thank you. Good to see you, Mark. Enjoy that new mandolin. All right, so we sent some extra stuff, some cool stuff. It's a new armrest. Look at that thing. That's gorgeous. And this may be part of the, I bet this goes with the uh, octave mandolin. The t-shirt, beautiful armrest on there, that's gorgeous. And then I think the bridges must be farther inside that box there, so let's look in there. Got a little protective packaging because this did come all the way from Warsaw, Poland. Kyle's saying you should play your Sam Bush tomorrow for a shop talk. Okay. You haven't done that it in is, a while. It is next door, I believe. It doesn't get played all the No, it's much. at my house. Is it? I got it at home. Yeah, I played a show with Casey and the Attaboys, and I brought that mandolin and played it with her, and then took it home. So this is cool looking octave case. Let's see what the mandolin looks like. It's going to be case from style. Malaga, Spain, Jeremy. From Spain. He's back. Alex, my thoughts on the mini bass were the same thing I was talking about earlier, that, that uh, those... Uh, Lanakai's are really fun to play. They sound good. Get the one with the wound strings, not the uh, rubber strings. It's I like everywhere. It. Sounds great. Listen to that tone. Jamie's asking. Oh, that's uh, gorgeous. He was at that IBMA, but he missed the discussion. Uh, yes, that is the year that Jamie set up his merch in the lobby. It was yes. great. He wasn't even playing. That's huge. Oh, that's gorgeous. I mean, tune it up. 
So yeah, it is quite a bit bigger than like the Eastman octave mandolin. Uh, I don't, do we have any more of those? I think we're all sold out. Yeah, we are. Yeah. We got Greg from Woodland, Texas, Jeremy. Is that Greg West? Mm, might be Greg JK. Maybe he's out of Woodland. So he has one You're of the Bullis right. mandolins. Yeah, Greg has a Bullis. They said they have the uh, mandolin bridge or the uh, banjo bridges next door, Joe. Okay, banjo you know, bridges are next door. They came in a different package. Go grab that octave mandolin in there, Jay. No. to do this. The craftsmanship is uh, exceptional on these. Where am I going to put it? Uh, good question. See, now I have my hands full and I can't work the machine. Okay. I just wanted to check. That's not going to stand up. Austin's standing there. He'll be there. Can you be a guitar stand? blank on these tuners but they're gorgeous they're awesome tuners huh Golden age? no the new one they're so smooth hey Kyle Bell's asking what is the wait time on an f9 they're not even making F9s. They're not right? making F9s, although I did just see that they're doing some custom made to order mandolins, so it might be worth it. Here's the deal. We had another F9 on order and a uh, acoustic shop custom one. In the end, it was only like $300 less than their F5G um, because it was a custom and the F5G is now standard model. Um, so I would recommend getting a custom F9 is probably gonna cost you more than buying their F5G. Which as silly as that sounds. And we don't know the wait time on any Gibson mandolin. No, we can't get them in. Yeah. Could be one year, could be What's 30 that? years. Hey, Jeremy, have you seen the Wilburn Guitars uh, Fixed Bridge Commando Mandolin video? Uh, which one was it? Wilburn Guitars Commando Mandolin. It's a fixed bridge. I have not seen that. So, so a mandolin Rubner, with the soul of steel string guitars. Rubner tuners. It's got probably like a bazooki so probably sweet. style. I have not seen that. Steve McCurry says you need a little Debbie room where you can stock Zebra Cake, Swiss Rolls, Star Crunch, and other goodies. Yeah, but we need to lock that room because every time we get a special treat... They go by quick, don't they? The kiddos next door like to just... They ate all of them. Quickly. They like the sweet treats. Well, that's just a beautiful sounding instrument. Look at that back on that. Just gorgeous. Got the maple wood binding on it. Uh, that's... Such a deep body on there compared. That's, that's cool. what's going to have you bring Eastman over. So size-wise on these, quite a big difference on that. So this is going to be more of a pro, obviously a pro-level octave mandolin. Where Eastman, even in the 615, is just kind of an affordable uh, octave mandolin. That I think is great sounding, but there is such a difference in that pro level. Again, you know, it's it comes with that price tag to go with it. But a, a hand-built, beautiful instrument all the way from Poland. Um, I can't remember off the top of my head what this is going to sell for. Like I said, it's already sold. 4500 4, That's what I thought it was in that range. But man, it's just beautiful. Even the, just the details on the tailpiece. They got like this uh, custom tailpiece that pinches the strings in there and keeps all those overtones from happening. And it looks like that just flips up after you loosen up that uh, 
top of the tailpiece. Bullish Sweet. branded one. Very, very nice. Hey, Jeremy, Christopher Fass is asking, tone guard or armrest first as a mandolin accessory? I say the number one accessory for me would be the tone guard because it really affects the actual tone and playability of your instrument. Uh, Comfort-wise, an armrest, I still haven't invested in one, but I want one because I've played a few mandolins that have that on there. It's very comfortable, um, and they just look like a, a beautiful accessory to go with it. But the tone guard on the back of it just makes such a huge difference. Um, I've had one, and not, not only just the tone and volume, but comfort. I know a lot of people first feel a little weird with that, but if you're playing for a long time, it kind of keeps the, the instrument from sticking to your stomach and getting all sweaty. It just gives a little room in between your, your stomach and the instrument to, to breathe. Skid Gears using the hashtag uh, Flannel Daddy. I'm still not comfortable with that. I am Skid wearing gear. a version of Flannel today, aren't I? Um, Alex is asking, what's the scale length on that? We need to measure that, don't that we? That is a good question. I don't know if he designated any of that in the build sheet. Um, probably not about, on here. About three feet. Yeah. I think they're going with the metric system, so we're going to say one yard, one meter. Sorry, one meter. That's just got such a great tone. Seaver Gaming is asking you guys carry any four string banjos, looking to get a four string plectrum. We have a bunch. Um, not so many new ones other than the good times, but we have a bunch of old vintage ones that we're going through uh, slowly. Yeah. Uh, from a lot of tenor banjos. Um, we got a number of those next door that are still going through our consignment. Uh, we have to research them a lot, kind of figure out what's been changed on them, what's original, what needs work on them. It takes a little bit of time, and you guys keep us busy by ordering stuff. I wish you would quit doing that so we could. No, that's not true. Keep ordering stuff, and we'll get to those consignments uh, in yep. due time. Actually, right now we don't have any force. Don't have any over here. The cool thing about those is they're played like a mandolin, so they're tuned. No, or more like a mandola, C, G, D, A. So you still will play them like a two-finger chord with a flat pick. Give us a call, Sievert. We'll hook you up with something. Let's kick you off here, Brian Eye Girl. We did that one <coughs> for, uh... Yeah, I think so. Me and John. Drew Warren just posted the Mans of Chap. Can't go wrong there. That's not like something you'd get in Cork Island. What is the price range of these mandolins, Jeremy? They're super so, affordable for what yeah, they are. For what they are, for a full hand built, and look at the quality of this. I mean, just gorgeous, gorgeous woodwork. I mean, even the way they taper off the, the wood maple binding into the heel cap there. Um, the craftsmanship is just top of the line. This one, you can't see it, guys, but this has like this really cool dip here where it comes out almost to a very sharp point along the edge of the binding. These remind me a lot of the, some of the techniques that... Very uh, deep uh, that, uh, relief there on the top and back. Um, that, so uh, craftsmanship is using? gorgeous. Uh, very Ryan. similar to Weber. Yeah. yeah, Weber stuff. So Weber with a very sh sharp relief on all the carving, which I think just really shows off the, the craftsmanship because they could just easily bevel that and make it a lot easier. But doing this up, down, then back up to curve to the top just shows some level of uh, skill involved. Um, but this one, I think, runs 4500 I think is what me and Austin are thinking in that range. I don't have it specific because it's just arrived. It's the first that we've had. I know the uh, F-Style, their uh, standard model mandolin is 4350 So I'm thinking we might be a little low on this one, just thinking of that. Uh, we'll have to get that priced. But still, just uh, for the price, one of the best bargains out there. That's what really turned me on at uh, IBMA is just seeing the quality of instrument for the price range. Well, I could have fun on this. Keep it. It's gorgeous. Um, Discellaneous has a pretty loaded question here. All right. 
Uh, I said it's kind of an in-depth question. Are Lloyd Lores worth it? People chase vintage Martins, but the best guitars are being made today. Is the mandolin world the same as far as vintage goes? So that's pretty loaded. It is um, loaded, but there is debate to be had there because I have played some Lloyd Lore mandolins that I think are absolutely worth it. Well, can we tackle it, the vintage worth Martin? Worth it partly because part of first. Sure. I agree. I We've question. stated this before that that we are in the world of the best built guitars. But we are not in the world of the best sounding no. guitars. That's two, two different things, yeah. in my opinion. Um, I'd say there is a lot to age, time, and, you know, that. Yeah. So that answers So I agree with that. I think when you talk about the age of the best instruments, it doesn't mean that they're currently building guitars now that are better than a 1940 D28. 35. It just 35 D28. It, <laughs> you're not comparing apples to apples there. I think. The, uh, They're built more level consistently, yes. and you get better value nowadays. Absolutely. Um, same with those mandolins. Uh, I like I was saying I played a few Lloyd Lores that are incredible instruments. Again, whether they're worth one hundred and twenty thousand dollars, that's more because they're just so rare, and it's like owning a uh, oh, what is the uh, violin uh, Stradivarius violin. It's just they're so rare and so sought after that that's driving the price. I don't think anybody's paying that price because and the value is subjective. I mean, I could say that a uh, you know a, a Maserati. Maserati isn't worth. I was reading an article on Maserati. Super, and they say purchasing it is actually the least expensive part of it. Obviously, they're like yeah. five, ten million dollars. It's the same, but just an oil change is thirty thousand dollars. I think is for an oil change. They recommend that you change your tires every ten thousand miles, and getting new t tires and wheels is like thirty thousand dollars. They say on average uh, every year you're spending about one hundred and fifty thousand dollars on maintenance for a Maserati, even if you're not driving it. That's true. So that's the only reason I haven't let you one. buy a Ferrari unless you pre-approve their your lifestyle. Okay, yeah, the Maserati. That's it. They actually had Tom Cruise owned a Maserati. He had tr tr trouble opening the side door at a a movie premiere, and it made him look bad. So they said they will not sell any more Maserati to Tom Cruise. He still owns that, that Maserati, but they won't sell him a new one That's because funny. he made him look bad by not being able to open the side door in public and made it look like it was a flaw with their funny, funny group of people there. Uh, We're not going to let you buy instruments from the acoustic shop unless we qualify you. I think it's a new marketing. Right. And it's going to cost you $10,000 a year in maintenance. So there you go. New, I think it's a new model we can work with I here. I like this. Maintenance plans. So I'm very excited about this. The Buis, Buis, Buis. Say it right. Yes, the Buis uh, relationship with the acoustic shop. I'm very excited for. John, you should check out the new octave. It's gorgeous. It sounds incredible. Um, but yeah, this one should not be here anymore. We got this in January. Just Lane is yeah. Come back is a. Uh, addition to this conversation uh he thinks the builder that drove that my question was gilcrest his mandolins are remarkably close to lores but more consistent as far as tone yeah i would agree and that's again why yeah, they're in true. so much demand too um the lloyd lore thing is owning a piece of history it is very very exclusive there's not many of them out there um they are just they're a rare bird i played some that i i would not purchased except for the investment and collectability of them. I wouldn't purchase them based on the tone and playability. They, I played some that aren't as good as any of the mandolins I own, but, you but do I have, have played some them, that are incredible. You have to give them credit for changing the entire mandolin world because before them, yes. they were really bad. But honest. if you guys haven't already watched that, which I'm sure all of you have because you're such great loyal viewers, um, Jason and the team did a great documentary on Bill Monroe's mandolin, and we got to talk with George Gruen for a long time uh, about the F5 mandolin that Lloyd Lohr uh, developed with Gibson in 1923, and he went into great detail about when they came out, the mandolin market crashed right when that happened, and they could not sell them. Like they, they, it was a premium mandolin at the time. They thought it would change the world of mandolin orchestras. It was like their big hurrah, and it was a flop, and really it wasn't when Monroe got his, he, he bought it for like a couple hundred dollars less than what they sold for in 1923 when he bought it in the 40s. And it really took till about the late 70s, early 80s before people started to say, hey, these are something pretty special. We should start uh, charging more for these. And all of a sudden the market really started to take off. But you could have bought one of the Lloyd Lord Mandolin in 1970 for like 1800 bucks. 
that's true. Nobody knew what they were. What a good another good point on these lures, by the way. Hypothetical. Would you have bought one stock of Amazon or one Lloyd Lore Mandolin? Amazon. Yeah. Um, another good point on these, they talk about the ones Trick that question, are dogs. They didn't have Amazon in 1980. Talk about the mandolins and dogs. What my experience is, these mandolins that have been sitting, like lures are notorious for being horrible until you play them for yeah. about a week. Mm -hmm. And they get way better. So just give them yeah. a little bit of credit there. That I do know most of those ones that are playing, being we, played. We've had that debate online. Do instruments actually close up and need opening? Um, I, from firsthand experience, say absolutely. And Lloyd Lores are one of the most evident ones. I, I played one at Starvey Creek. It had been 18 years ago. Uh, a fellow that had Lloyd Lore pristine condition, just a beautiful instrument, but it hadn't been played in probably 15 years. So he brought it out there, let me try it out. The first hour of playing it, which I was just sitting back by our uh, CD table playing this mandolin, the first hour I was just kind of like, man, this is. It's very tight, didn't have much tone at all. By the end of that hour, it was just like, boom. It was like huge mandolin. And if I, if I could go back in time with, with zero amount of money and still somehow scrounge up the money to buy one mandolin, I wish I would've got a hold of that one. Cause it was just, just hearing that open up in front of me was just an incredible experience. Scoot Gear's got a good plan. Let's build a time machine and stock up on F5s. And Amazon and Coca-Cola. We'll be Alex the, says, we'll I think the David Berkshire Gibson Hathaway. bought most of the good ones back in the 70s. I mean, David Harvey, possibly. I hadn't heard that. David I don't Gibson. think Gibson even cared about mandolins in the 70s, 80s. It was really, there was a, an interview with Bill Monroe on... I think he might mean Dave Harvey. So Dave bought a bunch of them. Dave bought some. I think uh, Frank Ray brought most of them <laughs> in yeah, the Missouri Ray area. Uh, um, uh, what's his name? Uh, who wrote? Uh, oh, uh, Oh, what is his name? He had 14 of them at one time. Marty Stewart? Uh, or? No. Uh, oh, uh, Herschel Sizemore? Herschel. Herschel owned a lot of them. David yep. Grisman, Jeremy. That's David Grisman, yeah. He yeah, did he have a number of them. Of them. Um, yeah, so it is debatable. Are they worth that? I think it's more because of the provenance and the, the collectability of them. But some of them have been just incredible instruments as well. There's a reason that they were sought after, that it wasn't just all hype. True. So. True yeah, enough. guys, uh, Bullets Mandolin could be that new Lloyd Lore, so you want to get your hands on one of these now so that uh, 100 years from now, these are going to be worth uh, $120,000. I'm sure. So you never know. Like, what is the next Amazon? What is the next Lloyd Lore? It's not mandolins, so I'll tell you that much. You never know. In the future, AI, when it takes over, maybe like the only thing that calms it is a nice mandolin tune. You keep telling yourself that. Jarrett Rex is asking, do you have custom TAS Mando grommets for sale? Not custom ones. Yeah, we, yes, we, we suck. Need to get those. Okay, so we believe in the Mando grommets. We put them on all of our mandolins that we sell. We do have a large package of them. We are going to start selling them as an individual pack, but I've been Maybe asked week after week, little tiny, and tiny. I don't do it. So we got to do humida trackers, like the Bluetooth humida trackers. And you know what's funny is I was just talking to uh, the girls next door about this, and we have little tiny Ziploc bags that we can market those and sell them individually and nobody's done it what we've been asking is a good name what do we want to call them uh tone you don't want to call it a tone suppressor overtone buster uh tone controller mando grommets Man he wants custom ones signed by you jeremy okay i don't know how i'll sign those but i'll sign the packaging and then uh we're gonna work on those uh, bluetooth meter trackers too and if you got a name for those guys put it in the comments and if we pick your name you get a free pack Dulane's asking, do those tone things that you hang on guitars, maybe mandolins that play tone, really work to improve sound? Yes. The we tone rights. Guys, we run them in the shop all the time, and that's not just because we're trying to sell them. We don't actually sell that many of these, but we do, when we get some new instruments in that just need some playing to open them up, obviously we want them to sound as good as possible, not only to sell them in store, but when it gets to a customer's home, a lot of times that very first drum is kind of their first impression of it and they don't really give it time. So if we can get it sounding, if we come across an instrument that just sounds, hey, this thing's really tight, I can tell it could really open up, we will run it on there for 24 hours, 48 hours. Um, I think it's we have, down, Trent. We have about three or four of those running in the shop. Uh, we were using all the tone rights, which do the same thing, but you just can't control the frequency um, that it's reproducing. That's why we, we do like the uh, 
Dr. Herringbone Tone Travelers, Tone Travelers are way more high tech. Yep. And it's so controversial. We love controversy. Guys, if you haven't watched it, and I want to see if we can recreate this for our own channel, but the guys with Dr. Herringbone Tone Traveler, they did a really cool experiment that I wouldn't have thought of because I would have said, all right, let's do a before and after and we'll run it on it 24 hours and then we'll play it <coughs> and see if you can hear a difference. They did very scientific. They just set a guitar in a room, put a microphone in front of it, and then they started their Pro Tools uh, re software recorder, which if you guys aren't familiar, you've probably seen it, where you'll see a waveform, um, which is just showing you the frequencies of the instrument in digital format for the uh, recorder. They did that and it showed like this really tight waveform like you would expect, but then they just ran it for I think like eight hours and you can see the beginning of it, this very small thing, and it just kept getting wider and wider and wider. And it was just the tone traveler on the guitar itself, but just showing how much more the guitar was responding eight hours later. By the end of it, it was probably four times the size of the waveform than amplitude. when it started. So the, the, the volume of the, the resonance of it, the amplitude, you could visually see on that graph, keep going up and up and up till eight hours later is at least four times the size. And that experience is really not debatable because it was just the guitar with that device. Science, how much more the guitar Jerry, responded? Jerry, you know they can argue against science. You can't argue against it's, science. It's, science it's, is, no. it's like gravity, guys. It's, no, it's like, no. hey, you know what's weird? Let's not get into arguing against science okay, right now. You know what's weird, guys? So we have something called a solar eclipse happening next week. I don't know if you heard about this. It's where the sun's going to go solar away for a little while. In the sun goes for a high. It's going to hide away and, until we sacrifice uh, a banjo player. Now, there's a solar eclipse happening. I was asking my kids, like, is your school going to be? That's assuming the moon is round yeah. and it's not. Or Jeremy. the earth. It's um, made of cheese. <laughs> it's made of cheese. Uh, Limburger. Uh, I asked my kids, is school going to do anything? And the kids didn't even know about it. The school. The elementary school is going to happen during the daytime on like a Wednesday, and they have no plan to take the kids out and have them stare it's at the sun. on a Wednesday? I thought it was on a Monday. It's a Monday, Monday, Monday. Yeah, I think you're right. I was thinking about taking my kids since they're not in school on Monday. So, so Missouri, uh, which, you'll get right with justice. It's going to be I'm over there at Poplar Buffs. I'm, I'm going to go like south, the, I think. Poplar Buffs going to be busy. I'm going to go to Clinton. Hey, are you going to watch the, the full solar eclipse on Clinton. Monday? Poplar Clinton, Buffs are going to be the... Clinton, uh, Arkansas. I, it's, I think it's... I thought it was a Wednesday. It's Monday. It's Monday. It's Monday. Yeah, we'll be two days late if we watch it on Wednesday. <laughs> well, like, don't don't go with justice then. Watch, have people Wednesday. have people like tuned in or are already showing up in Poplar Buff? Uh, like, oh, yeah. I know in St. Joe five years ago it was going to be the epicenter, and Airbnbs were going for like two thousand dollars a night ahead of that. Yeah. Nobody wants to go to Poplar or to Poplar, yeah, to uh, St. Joe for any reason other Either than one. to see the solar eclipse. So those Airbnb. rooms. All right, enough science talk. Skid Gear is asking, uh, is there a pre-order for your mandolin learning book? Um, there's no pre-order because we just don't know when it's coming, but I did contact Hal Leonard last week, and they did say it is being written and edited. And Jamie has a name for your uh, grommets. They're called Ghosts, G-H-O-S-T, Grommet Hole Overtone Suppression Tools. I like it. Get you some ghosts. That's a, that might be the use, most useful thing that he's ever commented on any of our live streams. And I'm just waiting for the. And uh, it's not all that useful. The alternate okay. version of that. Checks in the mail. Yeah, this free pack of grommets on the way. Throw those on your guitar. Actually, they probably would work on your top head top. What they about do. Banjos. We need them on everything. A, ahead of the bridge. Yeah, banjos in front of the bridge. Yeah, on yeah. the pick side. Um, Vince is saying I need Mando grommets uh, for his MD515 and a Humana Tracker. He was just on the phone trying to buy one of them Humana Trackers. So yeah. we'll that get that Vince. taken care of. Let's get it done. Mando I got my bumpers. work cut out. Andy A says Mando bumpers. Mando bumpers. It's uh, text says Monday is the eclipse. So I mean we can tell everybody. Overtone, overtone diapers. Basically, I don't like overtone that. Overtone diapers. They're, they're wiring grommets. The downside is you have to find the right size and also the right rubber. Rubber Mando buggy sticky. bumpers. Yeah, I like that too. He was a rubber baby bumpy bumper. I like it. We might get sued. Isn't that like a uh, rubber factory's? Rex says factory. put a cross on them and call them holy ghosts. I don't know about this. Um. Weber for a while was building a version of that. They had like this wood, beautiful wood piece that they cut out and inlaid, and they called them uh, tone nymphs. 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 But it basically had a, a grommet for each of the strings, but then just kind of clipped on the two side ones. Hey there, Erasmus. Zebra breaks, as Skid Gear says. Somehow, guys, tying zebra cakes with yeah, them. Yeah, we got to. 
We got to paint them white and black. Oh, yeah. Is right. a zebra white with black fur or black with white fur? Uh, I don't know, but I know if you cross a, a donkey and a zebra, they go crazy and they're like demented, <laughs> tormented animals. What do you get if you cross a rhinoceros and an elephant? Pluck plugs. Elephino. <laughs> Skid Gear's got a lot of great stuff. Oh, that's interesting. Is it not repeatable? Hey, no. It's just a, an opinion on Jeffrey Epstein that I don't know. <laughs> irrelevant. Um, it seems irrelevant. Well, we probably better wrap this up. But yes. guys, be keeping an eye out for Bullis mandolins and banjos. Should be coming here very soon. Uh, we got the new banjo bridges that we'll be talking about and taking photos of and having on the website as well. We will have Bluetooth hygrometer slash thermometer. I got an answer for your question, Jeremy. Aaron oh, says zebras are black and white, black with white stripes. You could tell by their nose. The nose. And Delane says uh, his you Eastman know, came with a thread of leather. You know works a the polar same? Bear question is mark. Black. I don't care. I had a good question. What? And they're black with clear fur, what? and it's just the air underneath their fur polar that makes them white. Yes. I know that. Okay. Um, they're they're hollow. Like, like birds' feathers. They're hollow, so they're good insulation. Yep. Shut up. Um, <laughs> Delane says Eastman came with a thread of leather. Work the same. It does. Okay. Okay. There's a debate. Um, like these, the Buist Mandolins even have leather in, inlaid. See that inset in the uh, tailpiece? And also, everybody talks about the uh, my favorite tailpiece, the uh, James. James tailpieces. They have the grommets kind of built in. I've noticed that those overtones still happen. Um, leather I did for years, just kind of weaving in and out. It kind of gets grungy and old. I do just like the cleanness of the, the grommets, and they are the most effective. They completely stop those strings from doing any kind of overtone. Um, the downside is if you break a string on stage, one of those grommets goes flying, and you most likely will lose it. Strings. So we always try to send a couple. When we start sending these, there's going to be a couple extras in there. Um, but when I'm in the studio, I have to use these or some scotch tape just around the headstock and tailpiece because you just, in front of a microphone, you just hear this yeah. ching, ching, ching. Yeah. Kind of sounds like these banjos behind me. So, yeah, the leather is a good alternative. This is just a lot cleaner looking, and I think it does a better job. And you don't have to sit there and weave it in between all the strings or tuck it underneath the tailpiece. Yeah. All right. We're going to leave with this one. Uh... Uh, like Jamie says, TAS for all your unwanted F-hole noise needs. It's true. Yeah. There's some truth there. But we're going to leave it with this, guys. Well, though. We're going to leave with this. Skid Gear says uh, zebras are gray if they're running fast. Ha! Huh. Get it? The white and black stripes kind of blend together into a gray. I get jokes. All right. Goodbye, guys. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning thanks in. Tomorrow we'll guys. be doing Shop Talk at noon where we'll talk about all the things that are happening at the shop. We're going to talk about want to tune in. whether or not uh, ostriches, I don't know, I'm trying to think of an analogy. I'm going to play number one tomorrow. That, with the, it is, sure. still have the pick guard on it? Yeah. We talked about the pick guard. So we'll have a preview of the pick guards that will, are not the final pick guard, but will give you an idea what they're going to look like. So right. Tune in tomorrow, guys. We'll see you then. Goodbye, bye.